All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for the 2015 updates. This is Molly Welsh. I am actually filling in for our Director of Sales, Jennifer Lasanti, for today's webinar. A um, few housekeeping items before we begin. Um, everyone is placed on mute. Um, if you do have some questions, you can please submit those in writing, and there will be someone else um, also monitoring the questions, and she may be interrupting us throughout the presentation uh, so we can stop to answer some questions for you. Um, this presentation will be recorded. Um, you will be receiving the documents um, that we have, that we are going to be presenting. You'll be receiving these documents by tomorrow afternoon. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started on the 2015 updates. A lot of you may have been on a previous webinar about a month ago where we were kind of just trying to uh, get all of the information from all of the carriers. A month ago, we still didn't have a lot of the underwriting guidelines, plan details, things like that. So we, we do believe we do have the majority of information that you're going to need and that you probably have been needing already. 12 ones are all still, some are still in underwriting, uh, but we are receiving quite a few 1 1 groups. I know you are quoting those for uh, January and February effective dates. So um, we hopefully this will help out a little bit on our tools and resources that we've created for 2015 and to show you uh, what those tools are and then again how each carrier will be handling. Each of their portfolios, there's some underwriting information in here and some network information in here. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start on what's new at Beer and Purvis. So here's the tools and comparisons. I'm going to go through each one of these, but we have the ACA rate trend. So I don't know, uh, a couple years ago, we were able to show you year-over-year -year rate increases, but we weren't able to do that last year only because it went from your really age-banded rates over to ACA rates, so we weren't able to give you an apples-to-apples -apples rate trend. So we do now have a rate trend, which we'll go over. We have most competitive by county. Their like plans tool, I'll go into that a little bit, our full network plans, the 90-day waiting period and how each carrier will be handling that. Um, we have our, our pay or play tool and the new 6055, 6056 reporting guidelines that we have created. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into a few of those. So I was talking about the trend increases. So this is just a sample, and we're not going to go through the whole entire thing, but we can see from January of last year, 2014, to January of this year, what the rate increase has been uh, for that year, for that product, for that region. So you're going to see, and these are the most popular plans or what we mostly sold last year in 24, in the 2014 year. So you can see, for example, the gold HMO 35, which used to be the GZBA in certain regions or in most regions, it went down by 6.5%. So you can see that. So this gives you an idea of how the plans are running with each carrier, and it gives you an idea to talk to your client if you haven't received their group's renewal yet to say, hey, this plan's running at you know, a 10% decrease or a 5% increase, that type of thing. So we are able to do that now since we are ACA to ACA for a whole entire year. So that is our um, ACA rate trend. Now, one little caveat to this tool. Last year, as most of you may know, the rates were, um, were done by employee zip code. This year, in 2015, all of the rates are going to be run by employer zip code. So there's just a little caveat here that these may not be 100% accurate as far as the actual percentages because it's going to be based on the region and based on that employer zip code. Most competitive by carrier. This is just a sheet that we put together once we get all of the groups or the carrier's rates. We can see um, basically what's the most competitive in that, in that area. Um, from $0 deductible plans all the way up to HSA $5,500 deductible plans. And as you can see, UHC, Select Plus, and Anthem Gold, PPO 500, across all regions are basically um, the most competitive in most areas. So this is just kind of another snapshot. We know you're going to be um, running the rates for your clients, but this is just a nice snapshot that we've put together in case you, say, may have a client in Fresno, but you're located in San Francisco, and you want to kind of get an idea of what is selling and what is the most competitive in that area on a quick snapshot. So we have that tool available to you as well. 
The other tool we have, uh, this is nothing new. We've had this for years. This is our full network like plan comparison. And what this tool does is it basically says, okay, I'm on the Aetna PPO, say 250 deductible plan, 9070. I want to know what other um, plans are basically like that plan. What other plans should I be quoting that have the full network, uh, $250 deductible, et cetera. So it's going to give you, and it's going to take uh, the guessing out of what plans you should quote. So it makes it really easy. Also, uh, back in, I believe it was July or August, maybe it was a little bit later, um, the quoting engine that we use, Health Connect, through BP Quote, uh, you can now filter those uh, those plan designs. So you can say, I only want full network. I only want a $500 to $1,000 deductible. I only want 90% coinsurance. And it will really drill it down so it makes it a lot easier when you are quoting. But this is also nice, too, just to get the plan names and, and to see really what you're quoting. So that's nothing new. The next thing we created, and this is something we created last year, really because um, Anthem had those weird plan names, GYFA and GZWF and all the ones that we never really quite learned throughout the year. So we created this last year to show you, hey, what does that plan really mean? Is it a full network? What metallic level is it? What deductible is it? What's the out-of-pocket, et cetera? We really wanted to create something to give you a first glance. Um, we have continued to create this for full network if you wanted to see all full network plans and really some side-by-sides. You know, I want a platinum plan, I want a zero dollar deductible, I want to know what the out of pocket is. Again, it's another tool for you to use. Um, same information, kind of just a different place. And a lot of people like to look at this to see what, what is available. So that's our full network plan benefits guide. The other uh, tool that we created is, as we know, SB 1034 did pass. So a year ago, but last January, small group decided, hey, we're going to, um, the state passed the law stating um, the group can have no more than a 60-day um, a waiting period. So on the 61st day, that, em that employee needed to be covered. Well, then that change in SB 1034 was passed saying, well, no, they need to be covered um, no more than 90-day waiting period, so giving that additional 30 days. So how does each carrier handle that? Well, basically, the law didn't go into effect until January. A lot of people were saying, you know, it's the day after it passed, what's each carrier going to do? Well, the law really doesn't even go into effect uh, for a couple more weeks, January of 2015. But as you can see, HealthNet is saying, hey, we can go back to September 1st. So if you wrote a December 1st group, a November 1st group, they were allowing those groups to do uh, a 90-day wait. So if we're going to go down, it just basically gives us the waiting period options for 2014 and 2015, and it is for all carriers Yes, they can have the 90-day waiting period in 2015. And again, in uh, 2014, it just kind of depended. HealthNet was able to do it, and United was able to do it. So what does that mean? Basically, each carrier is going to say who's doing first of the month following day to hire, first of the month after 30 days or one month. So it just gives you really drilled in on each carrier, because everyone does it a little bit differently. Um, and then how does off-anniversary renewals happen? So just say, okay, great, well, my group, you know, grandmothered in December, and they had to go to that 60-day wait. They couldn't do any more than that, and now it's January, and the law has changed. What can we do? So Aetna, this is Aetna's right here, and they're saying all December groups that just grandmothered or that you just wrote in December, they will do a one-time, basically, request if you wanted a 90-day wait, you have to submit that by February 1st for a March 1st effective date. So Aetna is saying, hey, we're going to do it, but we're really too busy right now uh, with all of the 12-1-1-1 business. But February 1st, if you request this or prior to February 1st, we will allow your group to go up to 90 days uh, from March 1st effective date. Um, let's see, Anthem Blue Cross, beginning with January effective dates, they can request a waiting period change at any time with a company uh, with a company letterhead. So they're being very lenient, saying, hey, if you want to go to 90 days, January 1st, you can do that. Uh, Blue Shield, they will, all groups will be moved to the first month after 30 days on January 1st. Uh, if you want a different one, you need to contact Blue Shield. CalChoice is not available. Groups may only change their waiting period at renewal. HealthNet is saying yes, 
Um, you can do it at any time. Just contact your account manager. And Kaiser and UHC are saying, hey, you guys can do what you want. We're not going to police this anymore. We're going to have this administered by the employer. So you just, you know, the employer can choose what they want, um, and they're not going to police any of that. So this is the SB 1034 um, cheat sheet that we created, because as you can see, every carrier is doing it a little bit differently. So this is a document, uh, another tool that we've updated. It's the pay or play document. This is, we have two different versions. We have um, the 2015 version, which is up to 100 full-time equivalents, and we have the 2016 version. I'm not going to go through this, but basically it's just going to give you the guidelines of, um, you know, what actually you need to know, what the, what the dates are that, you, that you, the group needs to be aware of, what is pay or play, when is it effective, when do I have to comply? How do I comply? It's a nice little um, cheat sheet for your clients. Again, counting your full-time equivalents. How do I do that? What size is your company? And then here's a worksheet, and you just click on the worksheet here, and you can and it will actually calculate it with, with the numbers that you're putting in. So I'm not going to go in detail about the pay or play, but just wanted you to know it is updated. We do have that, and we will send that out to you uh, tomorrow. The other item that we have is the uh, 6055 and 6056 uh, reporting guidelines. And let me just make this a little bit bigger. Kind of hard to see, but um, basically the 6055, um, the health insurance carers have to provide this. Your employers don't have to do anything here, but they have to report that on all size groups. But the 6056 reporting is for all those employers with 50 or more full-time equivalent employees. So it gives you the reporting deadline, um, how they're going to do it, what the forms are. You can click on those. Um, reported by both fully insured and self-insured has to be reported by the employer. And then it gives more in required information. So that is just some information that we've put together for you. It has the final regulations on that, Q&As on that. And then preparing our preparation suggestions, it will give you um, what you should maybe be talking to your client about now, uh, research what the requirements are, established procedures on how they're going to start tracking their employees, um, discuss requirements with them, um, and then implement. try to implement these procedures as soon as possible because, again, it's not due till 2016, but you need to start collecting this information for 2015. So if you have specific questions on that kind of thing, let your rep know and we can try to research for you. But this is the new reporting guideline um, guide that we have. Okay, so we went through all of our tools and comparisons that are updated for 2015. Um, I wanted to just kind of continue on to the updates. Wanted to let you know that um, Beer and Purvis now does load the eligibility for Anthem and UHC for groups 100, 1 to 100. So we now actually put everything in their system to make for a quicker turnaround time. So I just wanted to give you the update on that. Rating methodology for 2015, all carriers, and I think I mentioned this before, will use employer zip code to determine the employee rates. So that's a good thing. It makes it a little bit easier that we're going to be able to do that. BP quote, just so you know, pediatric dental rider is only now required for Blue Shield. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield were the only two carriers last year that um, you had to add the rider because it wasn't embedded into the rates. Blue Shield, you are still having to add that rider to it. So um, just let you know that's kind of um, Blue Shield's the, the only one for now. I heard they may change that at some point, but um, at this point, you still need to add that rider when you're in the quoting engine. Um, just a few 2014 reminders, rates uh, change, rate changes occur only at renewal. So just be aware that um, this, is, this again started in 2014, but uh, it used to be you changed at the group's re uh, birthday, but now it's only at renewal. It's been like this since 2014, but there's been quite a lot of confusion on it. And as you can see, uh, carriers are doing a little bit different. Aetna United HMO and CalChoice charge new higher premiums for the age of the group's last anniversary, but Anthem HealthNet and UHC PPO, so they're doing it differently within the same carrier, charge new hires the premium for their age at the time of enrollment. So that can get really tricky when you're trying to do worksheets and things like that and trying to, trying to get everyone their rates, but just be aware that's been going on all year long. 
um, and that's still happening for 2015. Uh, zip codes in multiple counties, so sometimes there's the same zip code in multiple counties, and that rate will be defaulted to the most populous county in that group. Um, just, again, a reminder, this has happened all in 2014, small group deductibles and Rx costs accrue to the medical out-of-pocket maximum, so that's been happening all year long. In large group, it depends on the carrier. Um, the deductibles and Rx costs may have a separate out-of-pocket max, but combined, they cannot exceed the ACA max. Okay, so that's just a couple of 2014 updates. I'm moving into ancillary, I'm going to just briefly go through um, the CARES that we represent. So we have Choice Builder, and if a lot of you don't know, that's through Choice Administrators. Um, it has packaged dental, vision, chiro, acupuncture, and life from multiple carriers. And the new big news that we have for 2015 is that the, there's a new Delta Dental Platinum PPO, and it uses that premier network. The, the old plan had the, the PPO, you know, the, the smaller network, but now we have the premier network. So that's good news for, for Choice Builder. Delta Dental, there was a rate pass for 2015. So their 10-year average is very, very low. So I know going out, when you look at the Delta Dental rates, you may say, okay, these rates are a little bit higher than everyone else. But you can see on the back end, um, they're really maintaining those rates for years. The premium network is, or, I'm sorry, the premier network will now be available down to two lives. We used to have this uh, up for five plus, and starting one one, it's down to two lives. We can do dual options, so DHMO and PPO will be available for groups of four plus. Guardian, they have a maximum rollover, which is nice on their plan. MetLife, uh, you can get up to a 3% discount on each line if you're selling three or more coverages for groups of 10 or more. So a couple discounts there. And they do have a MAC calendar, your maximum, up to $5,000. So they're, um, you know, if you're looking for that, we can definitely get you the MetLife quote. VSP, we have the same direct, we have the same rates as going direct with VSP. Um, up to 99 lives, and we start down at five lives, so it's the exact same rate, and there's no admin fee or third-party administrator fee, so it works really great. Um, they had a 3% rate increase for 2015, and they've changed some of their um, designer frame uh, from Ancline to, or Ancline replaced the Michael Kors, so the big news for VSP. So uh, that is uh, our ancillary update. So moving on to the medical carriers. On Aetna, so groups of 1 to 50, their platinum full network PPO has a very low out-of-pocket maximum. So a lot of these carriers have the 6350 out-of-pocket max, and Aetna actually has a full network platinum plan with an out-of-pocket maximum of 4000 which is actually a really nice plan. And they are looking pretty competitive lately, so definitely be looking at Aetna. Uh, the 2015 plans use their Value Plus four-tier formulary. And for large and small group, their adult vision exams for glasses and contacts are no longer covered under medical. That was a big thing for Aetna, but they're no longer going to be doing that for small and large group. For underwriting, they've gotten a lot more lenient. So 10 plus enrolled groups with a prior carrier bill, we do not need a DE9C. So those are nice for those groups that, um, you know, someone isn't on the DE9C for some reason, um, and we have to prove we have to prove their enrollment. Um, if you have a group of 10 or more enrolled, we just need the prior carrier bill. They will do startup, uh, will be guarantee issue after six weeks. Some carriers will do six weeks, some carriers do 50% of the prior quarter. So Aetna's being lenient and saying we will do it if we have six week of payroll. And then on those owner only groups where we, you know, it was a big shock to everyone I think last January when all of a sudden, we couldn't write owner-only groups, and all the carriers were saying no, and they couldn't be husband and wife, and there was all these stipulations. Uh, you had to have W-2 employees. Aetna will allow owner-only, if it's a C-Corp, if the owners are W-2 employees. So a lot of times we got calls last January saying, well, hey, the owners are a W-2 employee, but they're also owners, and the carriers are like, no, we're not taking those groups. Aetna will, as long as it's a C-Corp, and your owner does have to be a W-2 employee. So those do exist because we had a lot of those last year. Um, they will allow the domestic partner to count as W-2 employee, where some carriers say, nope, that's like a spouse. We're not counting them, but they will allow the Aetna will be lenient on that. And then we already talked about the 90-day um, waiting period. They will offer that to December groups to change their waiting period for effective date of March of 2015 to first of the month following 30. 60, 
uh, days if requested by February 1st. That's on that cheat sheet that we went over earlier. Moving on to 51 plus with Aetna, their rates have been very competitive. We've written quite a bit of Aetna 51 to 99 size groups in 2014, and that look, that's looking to be pretty competitive also for 2015. Obviously, it, it depends on the group and the makeup of it, but um, they're, they're being pretty aggressive lately on those. And if you do want discounting, because a lot of times when the rates come, you know, spit out of the computer system and you get those rates, those are not always the best rates. So there's a lot of negotiation that does go along in large group. And again, we are happy to help with that no negotiation, or you can still work with your direct rep if you want on that negotiation. Um, but they will, they're all looking at, you know, discounting those, but Aetna does require a renewal before they'll even try it, you know, start to have that conversation of discounting. So Aetna is one of the carriers that all deductibles, co-pays, and co-insurance for both medical and pharmacy will count towards out-of-pocket maximum for large group. And then same as small group, their 2015 plans use the value plus four-tier formulary plan. And then same as small group as well, I already went over this, the adult vision exams um, are no longer covered under medical. They have strong California national networks. And the big news for large group, or where I, I call large group, the 51 to, to 100 size space, all the carriers are basically saying we only need 50% of the total eligible um, and there's no minimum. So in 2014, Aetna needed 50% and a 40 of minim minimum to enroll. Now they just need 50% of the eligible. And Aetna did just change um, for 2015. Their broker commissions will now be at 4%. Moving on to Anthem Blue Cross uh, for small group. Uh, just, just a reminder that in 2015, producer renewals will no longer be mailed. You have to get that through your producer toolbox. If you have questions or need help with that, just let your uh, sales rep know. Um, the big news with Anthem, and I think a lot of you already know because you've been quoting your 1-1 business, is we finally have logical plan names. So no more of the GYFAs that we don't understand what those mean. We now have... Uh, you know, in the in the plan name, we know what metallic level it is. If it's an HMO or a PPO, it's not a direct access or guided access because no one knew what that meant. Uh, we have the deductible amount, we have the coinsurance amount, and we even have the out-of-pocket maximum. So then I mean, they went very far on this and basically gave us everything to know about the plan. So that's the new exciting news with Anthem um, plans that include select in their name. If it's narrow, the, it, only if it's a narrow network. So if you don't see select in the plan name, then that means it's a full network plan. And you can revert back to our um, full network plans over here, like I went over earlier. You can see, you know, these are all full network plans, and you can see um, what those are all called. But uh, basically, if it doesn't have select in their name, we know it's going to be a full network. So there's going to be no confusion there. Um, they're offering the national formulary, which is their larger formulary list, with the full network plans. Um, last year, in 2014, they had some full network medical plans, but they had a, a smaller formulary listing, which really didn't make sense to a lot of people. So now if it's a full network medical, it's going to go with the full network pharmacy. So there's no um, confusion there. I said earlier regarding pediatric dental, it's now included in the medical rates. You no longer have to add that as a writer. No longer a line, separate line item on the bill, and the medical deductible and out-of-pocket max will apply to medical dental benefits. So just be aware of that. And the other exciting news that Anthem has is something called Live Health Online, and this is a new online um, webcam kind of doctor visit. It's an online doctor visit where you can log on. If you are an ACA member, so basically anyone that did not grandmother, um, and anyone that has uh, written new business in 2014 and moving forward, it's just going to be their regular office visit copay. So if I had a $20 office visit copay on my plan, that is what I would pay if I'm an ACA member. If I'm not an ACA member, maybe I grandmother, or maybe I'm on individual, or maybe I'm with Kaiser, it doesn't matter. You can still go on without being an Anthem member, and you would pay $49 per visit. So you'd go on, you'd have to have webcam capabilities, but just say you wake up and your kid has maybe a rash on their face, and you can actually um, log on and have a doctor visit, and you can pick the doctor you want. There's going to be multiple doctors with all of their information listed about who they are, um, what they do, all of that. You can pick your doctor that's available, 
you will have the online capability. They could actually look to see what's going on. They can prescribe something to your local pharmacy, or they might say, you know what, I can't help you. You need to go to the emergency room, or I would definitely be calling your doctor the next day. If they don't solve the issue that day, you will not be charged your copay. So it's kind of cool. We haven't tried it yet. Bear and Purpose is actually grandmothered, so um, I don't get it unless I pay the $49. But again, that's still going to save you a lot of money versus emergency room and even urgent care if you wanted a quick, um, quick fix. There's also um, a demo at LHO Introduction, so if you need that information, we can send that out. Underwriting, um, so this is not new. This was available, or this is what was going on in 2014. The employer must select one HMO network and one PPO network. It's the same for Blue Shield. You can't mix and match networks with those two carriers. So just a reminder that that's still continuing on in 2015. New participation rules. Um, groups of 15 or more, we need 50% participation. So they, be, they are being a little bit more lax than they were last or you know, at the beginning of 2014. I think we still needed you know 70% for most groups. So it's down to 50%. Um, they are startup friendly, so it will be guaranteed issue immediately if you have a brand new startup group, as long as we can provide 30 days of payroll within 45 days. So basically, for an example, you have a group that maybe just starts today, and they say, oh, we need health insurance starting 1-1. Well, Anthem would actually take that group if it really is just starting today. And as long as they have um, two employees that they can put on payroll, by um, within 45 days. So if you go for a 1-1 effective date, they're going to need 30 days of payroll by February the 15th. Now we've had some questions that have come up because maybe a group started in last April of 2014, but they didn't have any employees. So now all of a sudden they're saying, hey, we're now adding four employees starting January 1st. We now can do this startup rule because we're brand new. Well, technically they're not because the group actually opened business in April, but they just didn't have employees. So that's not a, a startup as far as insurance goes. So just be aware, talk to your rep about it, but they are being pretty friendly on the startup rule. And also with owner-only groups, as we said earlier that Aetna, you can have a C-Corp as long as the two owners were W-2 employees. Their uh, Anthem's actually a little bit more lenient they will allow owner-only groups if they are not 100% owned by just one person, so you have to have more than one owner, and they cannot be husband and wife, and that's it. So we can do that, and they just need to fill out a form that um, states that they're, the owners are working more than 30 hours per week, and we have that form. So they're being very lenient on the owner-only groups. You do not need that W-2 employee. So moving on to the 51 to 99 elect, if all, if all of us can remember way back in 2013 when we had the elect portfolio with the elements plans and the GenRx plans and all of those great plans that we had, Anthem still has those plans available in that 51 to 99 elect segment. So if you do have a group, they will be age banded, the old, the old age band rates that, were, that we had, but they will have the mental health parity in there. Um, we can off, offer multiple uh, plan offerings without a rate load. So basically, we'll all go through it, but large group, you can ha you know have a bunch of plans, but you're going to get loaded for those. This is, hey, you can have all plans like we used to do. We're going to you know offer six or seven different plans. So, But they're all age-banded rates. And the way that Anthem 51 Plus does it is that it depends on the SIC code. So most SIC codes will get a .90 rate, and then there's about five or six SIC codes car dealerships, medical groups, law offices, et cetera, that will automatically get the 1.0 rates, or I'm sorry, 1.1 rates. And we can get you those quotes within at Bureau Purpose. We can just shoot those out for you. We can also quote you the 51 to 125 with Anthem, and a lot of times we quote these at the same time. So if you want to see, hey, show me those elect rates, and I also want to see the composite a large group rates, we can do that as well. So for 51 to 125, they have the healthy support portfolio, and that's something that Anthem introduced last year in small group, and it's just extra rewards for healthy behavior, smoke-free, gym memberships, et cetera. So it comes automatically within a plan. You don't buy up to it. It just comes with certain plans. So you would buy the plan with that already included in it. They have something called Elements Choice EQ plans, and these are created for groups that previously never covered employees working down to 30 hours per week. So basically, if you have a group already in place and you had a bunch of employees that you said, hey, I'm not offering you coverage, 
we're only offering coverage to our 40 hours a week, maybe those management folks. Now, by law, in starting in January, they need to cover those folks, working down to 30 hours a week, but because of the law, you can add this. It's kind of like a rider. It's a benefit plan that you can add on to that. It's called Elements Choice. So just let us know if you have questions on that. They have something called a blue card exclusive EPO. So it's an HMO lookalike for out-of-state employees. And they used to have that a long time ago, and they brought it back, which we're excited about. Again, like I said, if you want multiple plans within your portfolio, HMO, PPO, high deductible health plan, um, maybe a, a high-low HMO and a high-low PPO, we can add some plans in there, but you're going to get loaded for that. And then the live health online, the doctor visit online that I spoke about in small group also has this for large group. And this is for all large groups moving forward, whereas in small group, you have to be an ACA member to get the offices at copay. And again, like I said, 50% of eligibles with no minimum alongside Kaiser. Anthem was also one of those carriers. We need 50% plus 40 to enroll, um, and which is nice because a lot of times those groups would get under 40 and they get threatened to get kicked out and you have to scrambling to find a home for them. So uh, with most of our carriers now, we only need the 50%. Moving on to California Choice, um, small group, just be aware that Kaiser does not give deductible credit when moving Kaiser through CalChoice. The other carriers will. So if I'm moving from HealthNet over to HealthNet, CalChoice, I'm moving from Anthem Direct over to Anthem, um, CalChoice, you would get deductible credit but Kaiser does not give deductible credit. So just be aware of that moving forward. Um, the networks, as we all know, the networks are really fun within CalChoice. I think we've navigated it pretty well. Um, I think most of you hopefully have seen this document, and basically this is just showing you um, what the full networks are, what the limited networks are within California Choice. Do you start here? Do you have anyone in another state other than California? Obviously HMO is not available. The options that they have are Anthem Advantage and Anthem Select. That's going to be your blue card. So it's going to be the same as you know going with Anthem um, Blue Cross. They're out of state. You're going to get the same network. But those are the two options they have for out of state. If you're a California employee, you can see how many options are available. But if you're really looking at full network only, then you can see here the Anthem EPO, so again, it's the full prudent buyer network in network, but there's no out of network benefit, or the health net PPO are going to be your two full networks on the PPO side within CalChoice. Moving over to the HMO, Kaiser, full network, Sharp is down in San Diego, WHA, Sacramento North, uh, so maybe this isn't going to affect you know, a lot of your groups. Aetna, the HMO deductible plan, so certain plans within CalChoice are full and the UHC signature plan within CalChoice are the full network. Okay, so hopefully that helps out. Um, we talk about this at enrollment meetings and, you know, it really is about the networks with CalChoice. Uh, we've, this year we sold a ton of HealthNet PPO with Kaiser. That's kind of really what we sold a lot of. But, um, again, I just went over this information on what you, you know, but the cheat sheet really will help you. 1 to 50 underwriting. So for CalChoice, um, they now offer a check by fax form and electronic ex signature acceptance, which is just saving a ton of time. Um, as you know, CalChoice, we never know what anyone's going to go into. They have options of a ton of plans. And we never know what that check amount's going to be when we pick up the group because we don't know who enrolled in what, and you're going to have to sit down and requote the group. So it's nice. We can bring the group back here. We can requote it based on everyone's enrollment, and then they, the group can send in a, a, a check by fax form, and we can get that going. We don't have to wait for the check to be sent through the mail. So for guarantee issue, one to four size groups, we need six weeks, and if you have a group of five or more, we only need one week of payroll. So they're another good startup um, carrier, but you do need to have five or more to enroll. Um, this is something new that we just... Um, found out about. So union, non-union, carve-out. So all the carriers will do union, non-union, carve-out, um, but CalChoice was our go-to carrier because it didn't matter if it was, if you had a 200-person group and we were writing the 30 non-union. CalChoice didn't care what size group it was as long as the group they were getting, the non-union piece, was under 50. They are now like every other carrier, and the total group size cannot be over 50. So all of our carriers are the same. So we were kind of bummed when we heard that because that was kind of our go-to carrier with union, non-union carve-out. So just be aware of that. 
Um, two adjacent medical tiers are allowed, so basically the top two, bottom two, or middle two metallic tiers, you can't have all of them within the same portfolio, uh, but you can have two that are sitting side by side. Um, and then they have the waiting period options is first month following, date of hire, 30 or 60 days. So they've gotten a lot more lenient on that. They used to just be super strict, and it used to be first month following, 30 days, and that was it. No exceptions. They could never change that. So that is um, also really good for them. And their commission is 6.5, no downgrade. So they still have a really good commission schedule, six, uh, flat 6.5. Moving on to the 51 to 199 CalChoice. Uh, basically, there's 19 plan designs. And, oh, you know, I think we have a question. Let's see. And it's basically regarding CalChoice. So let me just answer that until we, before we move on. Okay, so it says with CalChoice, so with CalChoice, the only full Anthem network is the EPO plan. Yes, it is correct. So within CalChoice, you can um, go HealthNet PPO, or if you wanted Anthem, then it would be the EPO. So in-network benefits are still prudent buyer, but, you're at, but you don't have out-of-network benefits. So hopefully that answers your question. But, yeah, that's been like that since uh, last January is when they came out with that. Okay, I don't see any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and move on with the 51 to 99. So, again, with California Choice, there's 19 plan designs. Um, they have lots of discount programs, hearing, HR support, etc. cetera. Um, let's see, network pairing. So CalChoice a little bit different, or CalChoice large group a little different than small group. The only options you have is Kaiser, HealthNet, and Western Health Advantage if it's available in your area. They, did, they were in here not too long ago, and they did uh, say that they were looking at trying to add some more providers to that large group uh, network within CalChoice, but for January, um, it's still the same, Kaiser HealthNet and Western Health Advantage. Alongside Kaiser, there's no minimum because Kaiser's within the portfolio. They've also changed their waiting periods, um, just like small group, first of the month following data, higher 30 or 60 days. And they're easy because they're one source administration, one bill. And frankly, if you're upside down with Kaiser and you've got, you know, 70 people on Kaiser and five people don't want Kaiser, it's a really good fit for you. Moving on to HealthNet. So, two, uh, let's see, the small group, they've changed their plan names, but really nothing's changed within their plan. So instead of the Platinum $20 copay, it's now the Platinum 90 um, Their HMO now covers specialty RX at a percentage. That's something new for 2015. Um, they are introducing new plan designs under smaller networks. So um, they have their regular PPO network, and they have a network called Pure Care and Pure Care One that's available in the Bay Area and Southern California only. That Pure Care One plan is two EPOs. So again, no out-of-network coverage. One plan is an actual HSA. Uh, and, or, sorry, HealthNet doesn't didn't have HSAs in. 2014, but they are now will have one HSA through this um, new Pure Care network starting in January. And we have asked for a comparison, and we haven't seen kind of what percentage of that Pure Care network is within the you know larger networks. We don't have that information quite yet. But if you see that on the quoting, it's um, if you're looking at these plans, the rates are pretty competitive. But again, they're in network only, and it's a smaller network. They have uh, the two HSP, which is healthcare service plans. Um, again, no out-of-network coverage is what they are. And although they don't require a PCP, they, they recommend it, but this is all part of this pure care plan. They've also um, reintroduced smart care, and they reintroduced that as of December 2014. It now includes uh, Northern California, CVS Minute Clinics, et cetera. So they are really trying to get that smart care, and that's the HMO is the smart care. All right, I'm looking at another, um, well, let me just go through one more thing, and I have another question up there. Um, just a reminder, their full HMO network is called Whole Care. So, but just be really careful. Um, HealthNet used to be a huge HMO carrier, and starting in 2014, they really became a big PPO carrier because their rates were really competitive. They had those platinum zero deductible plans. But their HMO is a really limited network, so their full network it's called Whole Care, and that's their only HMO network besides the Smart Care. And it, it, so it doesn't have all debates, Brown and Tolan, 
Physicians Medical Group of San Jose doesn't have any Sutter facilities or doctors or UC Davis. So just be really aware if you're selling that HMO whole care um, that you're aware that that network is a, is a little bit uh, more limited on that. And then for underwriting, they're also six weeks. So if you have payroll for six weeks, they will take the group and they are the one care that will allow a wrapping on any of their plans. So you can HRA it, self-fund it, do basically whatever you want to do. So I have a question here before I move on. Um, oh, a couple questions. Let's see. Okay. Is this webinar recorded for watching later? Yes, we are recording this webinar. Um, and can I get the copy of the presentation for my reference? Yes. So everything, um, you may have logged on a little bit later, um, but, you know, at the beginning, um, I said that we were going to be recording this, and all of the materials will be sent out to you by tomorrow afternoon. If you need something sooner, just notify your rep, but, um, but we, will, we will get this information out to you. Okay, so um, the next question is, if a current grandmothered California Choice Group is a union, non-union carve-out, and the total group exceeds 50 employees, is it correct to assume that the group would be recertified at renewal and potentially lose coverage? So that's a really good question. So um, it's it's not their intent to go in and kick everyone out of what they're currently on. They're just not going to be writing new ones. The, um, CalChoice usually does um, audit groups, um, you know, if they're under five lives. So hopefully in this situation, but maybe you could be, you know, under five lives on a union, non-union car bus. I can't tell you 100% sure. They're not going to go through their book of business and just say, you need to get out, but they could be audited randomly like they usually do. Like I said, CalChoice usually does um, audit five or under, so they might say, okay, give me your D9C, let me see where the group stands. So, you know, it could, but, um, but again, they're not going to automatically do it, so hopefully that helps. Okay, so moving on to Health Net 51 Plus. So their manual rates were decreased. We have um, actually written quite a bit of 51 Plus Health Net, um, and, but their manual rates have been decreased, and we are um, uh, we are quoting the Health Net 51 to 99 rates now in, within Beer and Purvis. So you can get your quotes hopefully a lot quicker. A lot of times it took two to three weeks. So we can actually quote those in-house now, which is nice. Um, they're really on the smaller group portfolio now. or not? I'm sorry, not portfolio, but their operations. So if you sell a 51 to 99 size group with HealthNet, um, it's going to go through the small group underwriting department. So um, all the same underwriters are going to be working on those groups. They may ask us for, to reconcile a DE6, which we just got asked to do on a large group HealthNet. Um, so everything is kind of, they're, they're kind of moving more towards the 2016 rule of um, groups from, you know, 1 to 100 are going to go small group. It's still large group rates. There's still composite rates for another year within Health Net, but everything is, you know, the reps are down to, you know, up to 99. The um, operations is all going to be within that same small group department. Um, let's see, underwriting for 5199, a minimum of 38% or 19 eligible employees, which is a very greater must enroll. So they have a really good alongside Kaiser rule. You only need 19 employees um, or 38% so on a large group. So they're better than basically anyone else. Is Everyone's looking for the 50%. Um, are there any health net PPO rates? Oh, are the health net PPO rates the same? Um, through California Choice as well as Direct? Okay, so in 2014, the HealthNet Direct rates and the CalChoice Direct, or the CalChoice rates were about 5% difference. We have run the report or run the rates, and in January of 2015, uh, CalChoice rates are actually about 10 to 12% higher than going to HealthNet Direct. So there, there's definitely now more of a margin um, going uh, direct versus CalChoice versus HealthNet. Kaiser rates are still the same, but your HealthNet rates are going to be a little bit more now when you're us utilizing California Choice or the HealthNet within CalChoice. Okay, so moving on to UHC. So United uh, for small group changed six HMOs from HMO deductible plans to per day. So just some some contract language changes. They still have that ACEC. 
um, quoting that we can get for you. It's basically engineering firms. Um, it's it, their composite rates. We get them out of Illinois. We can actually quote them here in our office. But if you have a group that is an engineering firm, um, we can now get those rates. Um, we have the quoting engine here, and that might be more of a competitive stance than using the typical California rates file rates. Um, they have just an association where we can we can get lower rates. So just let us know if you have any of those um, clients and we can get you a, a, a quote on them. Um, so their underwriting for UHC is actually really easy. They kind of went from our hardest carrier about five years ago to working with to really our easiest carrier as far as underwriting goes. Individual coverage on and off exchange are considered valid waivers. So you don't have to worry about your groups of, hey, I got 10 people and Eight are on individual, but the two owners or the two, um, you know, other guys don't want, you know, individual coverage and they need the group coverage. They don't care. You can have it. Alongside Kaiser, five or more enrolled, we just need 25%. So they're super lenient on their alongside Kaiser rules. And they just announced that ID cards are no longer required for any waivers. So basically, you can just say they're on individual. It doesn't matter. They're not even requiring ID cards anymore. So they're really easy in underwriting. They're really flexible when 51% of the employees are out of state, so let your rep know the scenario, how many in each state, where it's headquartered. They'll ask you a couple questions to see where we're going to quote it out of, but typically we can get those run out of California. Um, effective in January, 1099s are now eligible with UHC. Now, you still have to have a true group, meaning I still have to have um, a guarantee issue group, you know, two people on for six weeks or 50% of the prior quarter. I have to establish that group first, that I am legit first, and then if I do that, then I can add my 1099 employees. There is a form they need to fill out if they are a 1099 employee. If they have been in business, or if they've been working there, working there long enough to file taxes, they need to use the miscellaneous 1099 form. They'll look at, you know, their data hire and that kind of thing, and they'll ask for that tax form. But if they're not there long enough to have filed taxes, um, they just fill out a new 1099 form. But again, you do have to first have a true group before um, you can't make up a group with 1099s, basically. You have to have a true 80-16-72 group. Um, choice Simplified and Multi-Choice State Portfolios cannot be offered together. We rewrite Choice Simplified. Um, there's another plan offering out there that we really don't offer or that we don't really quote that often so but it's just one portfolio. Um, broker commissions are um, now 6.5 for new business and 6% upon first renewal and for no additional fees they have additional services COBRA FSA currently available to groups sold with medical plan and no um, additional fees to groups sold with dental or vision standalone so they do have some some perks that way. And then the 51 plus uh, top selling mid-market care since June. We've written a ton of 51 and 99 United groups. So if you're not looking at United for your mid-size groups under 99, you really should be looking at that. They're being really aggressive. Their renewals are coming out decent. Um, we can um, load eligibility here at Beer and Purvis, so it goes really quickly. But just remember, you need to send the marketing in to your sales rep in order for us to continue to work on that group we can't be added on down the road. So just remember we can help out with implementation, um, kits, and multiple enrollment meetings, Spanish enrollment, et cetera, and we can help you negotiate your rates down with the carrier rep. You can go direct with the carrier rep. We don't care. Whatever you want to do, as long as you're sending that marketing in to your sales rep um, and the sales specialists that they work with. Um, essential health benefits, medical and RX accrue towards out-of-pocket maximum and you can mix and match plans up to five without a load. So that's nice. You can have a bunch of different plan offerings for 51 and 99, and they're not going to load it percentage-wise in order to do that. And then alongside Kaiser, 50% of them enrolled with no minimum. Um, and the, the key word there is enrolled, not eligible. So we just need 50% of enrolled, which is nice. And they have an alliance plan. Uh, it's a standalone plan. It's HMO only, and it allows a minimum of 15 enrolled in UHC. So they're really trying to compete with the Kaisers, so we can run you a standalone Alliance HMO option um, to run it alongside someone else, and they only need 15. So that is the updates for uh, 2015. Not as quite as many as last year, but um, 
hopefully um, you got, you know, hopefully the information was helpful. Uh, we do have another question. Are 1099s eligible to enroll in the 51 to 99 portfolio? No. So right now, that's not one of their requirements. It's just small group that they're allowing the 1099s. So, um, like I said at the beginning, uh, this is going to be recorded. Um, we're doing another webinar in the morning if you want to listen to it all over again. Um, the materials will be emailed out to you by tomorrow afternoon. We will see who um, attended the webinar. We will send you all the documentation. We will also house this information on our website, um, the recordings. So, I don't know if you want to add anything else. No, I mean, again, within 24 hours, we will send out all of the materials as well as a link to the recording. We do house them on the website under our webinars and education page, so you can find them there. Some of the materials that you will receive, um, we do keep in-house. So um, for those that attended, you will get a copy, but normally they would be resources that you would have to go direct to your sales rep to to obtain. Uh, other materials that we have, we also keep those on the pocket tool page of our website, which is a tremendous resource uh, for our broker partners. So certainly uh, feel free to email your rep if you have any questions. And again, we will be conducting a second webinar tomorrow morning at 9.30. So thank you everyone for attending and have a great day.